no hate crime charges for the Republican activists behind racist signs in Denver and Aurora. Aurora hid the hiring of its new police chief to keep him from being questioned by the community. They found him right after the swearing in today. Neighbors worked to block a pipeline company's expansion near an elementary school. And your support for our zipper merging crusade has led the state of Colorado to make a change. Zipper merge for the children. Zipper merging. Marshall's daughter is adorable. That is not exactly news, but sometimes neither is next. The Republican activists who posted racist signs along Colfax in Denver and Aurora will not face hate crime charges. Police say bias-motivated criminal statutes don't apply in this situation. Police have instead issued Christopher Bally of Aurora, who goes by the name Sabo, a municipal citation for illegal postings. The citation is actually for a separate sign incident, but DPD says the hate crime charges won't be brought for the recent signs either. Bally is a self-described Republican street artist who was nationally prominent in some circles before his history of racist writing surfaced. This citation he got carries a maximum penalty of up to 300 days in jail and a fine up to $999. On his YouTube channel, Bally said, quote, this is a parking ticket, but they could turn it into something bad. Those signs targeting migrants and Vice President Kamala Harris were put up in Denver and Aurora in late August. There's RT surveillance video we obtained of somebody putting them up that night. Bally took responsibility on social media for those signs, as well as others posted outside the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. The racist signs drew strong condemnation from elected Democrats in Colorado and from Denver Police Chief Ron Thomas, who told us this today. Yeah, I do think that, that the person that did that should be held accountable for, you know, for the way that they made this community feel. Bally did not respond to our request for comment. His citation issued late last week is for similar signs placed around Denver back in March. Pictures of those anti-migrant signs appear on Bally's website, and he discussed them recently on his YouTube channel where he used a racial slur for a Latino journalist who reported on the signs. Aurora has a new police chief picking up a plateful of problems made worse by the city's decision to hire him without any community input. He's Aurora's first full-time police chief in more than two years, the sixth chief in five years for a department that faces criticism from all angles, from community groups to conservative politicians. Former LAPD Commander Todd Chamberlain was sworn in at Aurora Police Headquarters this afternoon. After some disastrous public feedback sessions during prior searches for a new chief, Aurora decided to hire Chamberlain in secret. He takes the job a few months after Aurora police shot and killed an unarmed black man, Kylan Lewis. Lewis's family and community organizers have been protesting at Aurora City meetings since then, and they were critical of the private hiring process. Chamberlain met briefly with some of those concerned community members after his swearing in, and he agreed to go to one of their meetings. Why would you accept the position knowing that this is you getting off on the wrong foot? Because I can serve you the best. I can help you the best. I can be here for you. I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to be part of this community. The Aurora Police Department is still under a consent decree to monitor how that department uses force and interacts with communities of color. That's a result of the killing of Elijah McClain. Right now, APD is facing harsh criticism from Republican leaders inside and outside that community for pushing back on conservatives' claims that a Venezuelan street gang has taken over parts of the city. And the city of Aurora is once again walking back comments made by Mayor Mike Kaufman about that gang situation. The city is now backing off the mayor's threat to get a court order to shut down several apartment complexes where conservative leaders say the gang Tren de Aragua has taken over. A city spokesperson says they're instead going to give the apartment owners another chance to improve conditions. Mayor Kaufman has quite frankly been all over the place on this situation, sometimes contradicting himself within hours of making a claim. Now, Kaufman says he walked through two apartment communities on Dallas and Helena streets over the weekend and didn't see a problem, didn't have a problem walking through there. A Florida-based PR firm for the New York-based landlord claimed a month ago that the gang had taken over properties. It was a claim quickly picked up by conservative elected officials and social media influencers. Folks from Aurora City Council clear up to former President Donald Trump. Aurora police insist the gang has not taken over the buildings and has not been extorting tenants for rent. Now the city is offering to post police officers at those complexes for the next two weeks if the owners agree to bring back on-site staff and property managers. A third apartment complex was shut down already after years of code violations. In that case, the landlord has reached a deal with the city to sell or lease that property in order to get out of charges. 
Environmental activists say that it's bad enough that there is a pipeline company across the street from a school in Commerce City. As that company now aims to increase operations, our Angelina McCall spoke with nonprofit leaders opposing the move. A chain link fence and a street separate two sides of a different battle. All of us have concerns about the long-term health impacts. At DuPont Elementary in Commerce City, parents worry about their children and teachers worry about their students and themselves. About two times a year, I usually have vertigo episodes to the point where I can't get out of bed. Could be caused by a lot of things, but when you look up benzene exposure, the first symptom is vertigo. Jason Malmberg works at the school across from a Magellan pipeline facility. And so it's hard for me not to see a correlation there. So, I mean, benzene, toluene, all of these different chemicals that exist in the air are known to have health impacts in the community. Guadalupe Solis works with Cultivando, an environmental justice group that learned Magellan wants to add five more gas tanks on top of the 20 already across from the school. I think the division, the Air Pollution Control Division, should deny this permit 100%. The way that it was done was not with the involvement of the community. Solis says the company posted an announcement at the entrance of their property, but families didn't find out until Cultivando had a community meeting. No one out of the 80 individuals that attended our event raised their hand to say that they had had the opportunity to read this um, piece of paper, this announcement, or that they even knew. Knowing the health impacts, Malmberg wants the plans to be paused. It's the most recent event uh, that continues to uh, prioritize corporate profit over community. And Cultivando is asking that neighbors have a chance to speak up and push back. It's these companies and these corporations that have taken advantage of them that should be moving out, that should be making other plans, that should be making sure that they're not remotely close to children. The company is hosting a public comment session next Tuesday evening for community members for feedback. Now, important to note, Kyle, that Cultivando feels very strongly that had they not found out that this permitting process would have gone through and residents would have been really surprised once it did. Well, there are certainly eyes on it now. Angelina McCall, thank you very much. When you hear somebody say, zip it, that's usually the end of the conversation. Yet when we first said those words four months ago, it was the start of something that clearly resonated with a ton of you. Our crusade to get Colorado's drivers zipper merging made some real progress today. Thanks to your outreach to the Colorado Department of Motor Vehicles, every driver is gonna learn how to just zip it, Colorado. Perhaps one of my proudest parenting moments is teaching the zipper merge, but I'm not talking about the successful merging of cars, left, right, left, right, that you're seeing at the construction site at Spear and Waywada, where our zipper merge campaign began in May. What makes me a proud parent is this. Zipper merging. Zipper merging. You can't start too early. Zipper merging. Just like a zipper merge. When I first heard you talk about this, I thought you were crazy. Michelle Fries is a Centennial driver who is skeptical of the concept of driving all the way to the lane closure before merging to the lane next to you. And then she heard it in an AARP driver's course to help lower her car insurance. I think it's a good idea. And I uh, think they should teach it in driver's ed. And now zipper merging will be a topic all Colorado drivers learn about before a driver's test. You were instrumental in getting that conversation going and we were able to take a look at it holistically, and it's gonna be in the next uh, handbook uh, update. Electra Bustle with Colorado's DMV broke the news today. The soon to be released Colorado Driver Handbook will have a new zipper merge paragraph, which explains how to do it, but more importantly ends with, please respect of those who wait to merge until just before the lane ends. They are doing it correctly. Because of you, because of you, uh, we are reinforcing with the driving schools that they, when they're, when they're testing or when they're speaking to students, that they should also bring it up as a safety tip. Not just because of us, because of you and your dozens of emails to the DMV. Like when Julie wrote, anyone who has ever skied in Colorado knows how to zipper merge. Thaddeus was biblical with his email. It needs to be written and taught. And then there's Lisa, who said we can reduce the percentage of drivers who are being jerks. It's one thing to be in the handbook, another to actually in instigate the conversation. And I think that's what's critical here. Look, 
hero is too strong of a word, Kyle. <laughs> However, if we want to go stronger than hero, we can talk, uh -huh. talk superhero. Oh, no. By the way, it's not oh, a law. No. This is yeah. not a law. You don't have to zipper merge. Yeah, you don't. But if you're going to get it into the driver handbook. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. You have to take out the, the parent's Father's Day gift to me. Oh, is that, is that what that is? That's exciting. Get, let the people see that again. The people want to see that again. That's, that's amazing. Right there. This is TV. You don't need a cape. You've got that. And now everybody has an opportunity to learn how to zipper merge. Absolutely. Thank you, Marshall. And thank you for your recent support of Special Olympics Colorado and its Unified Schools program. Your latest Word of Thanks microgiving campaign raised $15,000 in a couple of days. That's being doubled by a match from the Daniels Fund. And then your monthly donations to the Word of Thanks Fund are going to drop in about another twenty k. So we're talking about $50,000 raised for that program that brings together students with and without intellectual disabilities through sports. You're good people. If you know of a nonprofit in Colorado that could use our help together, email me next at 9news.com. Two years after voters passed a plan to fix Denver sidewalks, city leaders may finally agree tonight on how much to charge. It was just like a switch went off. I'm going to start swimming again. A surprise diagnosis left her struggling to walk and talk. A year later, a marathon swimmer goes big to celebrate her progress made. Homeowners in Denver may finally start paying a fee to fix the broken sidewalks all over town. Denver's voters originally passed this proposal to charge homeowners based on how much sidewalk is out in front of the home in 2022. It got delayed a couple times in city council. Tonight, council will vote to approve a flat rate of $150. Particularly large properties might have an add-on fee. The program would provide a 20% rebate to affordable housing owners so the full cost wouldn't be passed on to tenants. The program originally had a nine-year timeline this proposal removes that. If City of Council approves of this tonight, homeowners will see that fee in January. Eventually, Kathy Sabin, we will see something approximating fall, but not today. Yeah, they need to get those sidewalks fixed, Kyle, before I kind of utter that word snow, because that can happen in September, but not today. Yes, 91 degrees in Denver today, even with the cloud cover, not seeing any cooling or beneficial rain showers, at least in the city or along the front range. It's a pretty day, but these numbers way above average. Now we've just popped up to 92, 99 in Lamar. Average high this time of year is 83. We'll be warm again tomorrow, and if we crack 60 days with 90 or better, we go into the top five in terms of the warmest summers on record. Not really a record anyone wants to be proud of. Uh, you may have noticed a little smoke and haze in the air today, not those beautiful Colorado blue skies. We can thank our neighbors to the north and west, the Pacific Northwest wildfires. That smoke coming right into Colorado because the placement of high pressure. And as high pressure begins to shift on Wednesday, we'll usher in a change in the pattern. Hopefully that smoke will scour away. Tracking isolated or stray showers across the Front Range and Eastern Plains. Nothing severe. A little wind, little lightning. If you're lucky, couple sprinkles on the window or windshield. The storms don't last long after after sunset, they all but dissipate. We get a sunny start to your day, and then we do this all over again tomorrow with maybe a slightly better chance of rain from storms in Jefferson and Douglas counties. Temperatures in the 80s now, trending downward after sunset, as you might imagine, and we've got 89 tomorrow. Cooler day with chance for showers Wednesday, back to 90, and then I love the weekend forecast. There's lots of football around our state on the weekend, and we've got sunshine in 80s both days. May I make a recommendation? It is an outside conversation about a topic that we've talked about together here. How we go about fact-checking politicians. You can do it one time or one lie. You can be very clear about that. But if there's a litany of them, if it's a constant part of their public persona, it, for you to actually contradict it and challenge it and correct it, it becomes all you do. And I wonder if you feel like, like if, you're, if you spend too much time fact-checking, people think, oh, well, he's just a partisan. It's part of a great conversation I had with the Columbia Journalism Review's podcast, The Kicker. Ahead of this week's presidential debate, they had some really insightful questions about how we run debates here at Nine News, how we try to hold candidates accountable during interviews, and how you, as next viewers, are such a key part of the process because those politicians are answering to you, and you have told us how you want these things to run. We continue to work through these questions every day, and as always, we welcome your feedback. And we'd love to have you listen to that full episode of the CGR podcast. We've linked to it on the next social media pages and on the recommendation page at 9news.com. Recovery is a marathon, not a sprint. 
Nobody knows that better than the marathon or celebrating recovery from a devastating setback by completing a marathon or two or three. She's a marathoner from Boulder who got so horribly sick, at one point she couldn't walk. Her long recovery tacked on another 28.5 miles today, swimming around Manhattan. It's just the feeling of being out in nature. I'm Beth Husing. I'm an endurance athlete. Three years ago, I hadn't been swimming for probably decades, and I uh, was hiking up in the mountains near Brainerd Lake, and I fell and broke my wrist. And I thought, what well, would be a good way to strengthen my wrist? So I thought, let's get back to swimming. And I made a plan to do the Catalina Channel last year, and unfortunately, that's when I got um, ill two weeks before. I had um, HSV1 encephalitis and meningitis. I was in Boulder Community Health for uh, almost three weeks and then went to a rehab facility. Um, really thought my marathon swimming career was over. I was devastated. I, I really was. I just thought I'm supposed to be swimming the Catalina Channel in two weeks and instead I'm in a hospital hooked up to IVs. Swimming at six knots, coming up on Mill Rock. Uh, the name of the swim is um, 20 Bridges because you swim under all 20 bridges. And since I'd run the New York Marathon four times previously, I just thought, well, that sounds cool. I'll be swimming under bridges that I'd run across. I have to admit, right before I got in the water at New York, I thought, well, I'm not really sure. You know, I'm pushing my body pretty hard, but um, I'd rather be doing something, as they say. <laughs> Recovery is, is possible. Um, and I'm here to prove it, but I just, at the time, I was really, really scared. For me, it's like just pushing yourself, and um, I, just, I just love swimming. It just has brought me so much joy. What a remarkable athlete. Pusing's next step is attempting the triple crown of marathon swimming. She'll go to complete the Catalina and the English Channel swims over the next two years. Something tells me the feedback is all zipper merch. Oh, let the people see the face. Let the people see the face. That's amazing. Viewer sent this in. Wish I remembered their name. Zipper merging feedback next. We just told you that our zipper merge campaign is going to be enshrined in Colorado's driver's ed feed book. But here's a sign that it's catching on elsewhere as well. Holly sent us a photo from the Minnesota State Fair where a crop artist used 12 different kinds of seeds to remind everyone, merge like a zipper. We all get there quicker. That does sound kind of minnesota -y. If you see a sign that makes you do a double take, email it to us next at 9news.com. Feedback from Rick who says, probably the best public service announcement ever. God bless you and your team. Denise says, thank you for zippering. Can you work on drivers running red lights next? I wish we had that power. Scotty says, please tell us how we can get one of those zipper merge shirts. The one that Marshall was wearing there. Scotty says, love it. Leanne says, she wants a shirt. Bob says, he wants a shirt. Stefan says, I would buy a zipper merging muscle shirt in a minute. Stefan, just so you know, it's a muscle shirt because Marshall was wearing it. Um, I'm pretty sure on me it would, it would just make me look busty. We'll see you next time.